Hello and welcome to another video guide from Grandstream Networks. In this video, we will go through the failover and redundancy function built into the Grandstream Access Points GWN7600 series. When deploying multiple GWN access points in a wireless network, a single GWN access point can be chosen to become the master to manage and provision the remaining access points thanks to the built-in controller. In addition, one of the slave access points can be selected to act as a fadeover master in case the primary master goes down due to network issues or power issues. The fadeover master will monitor the wireless network, and whenever it detects the primary master is down, it will promote itself to become the master access point. It is important to configure one of the slave APs as the fadeover master so in case the primary master AP goes down, the admin can log into the web interface of the fadeover master and use the built-in controller to manage and provision the rest of the slave APs in the same network. One more thing to note is the fadeover feature does not apply to GWN APs managed from the Grandstream Cloud platform, GWN.cloud, because a master is not applied in such case. So let's take a look at how this process works. In a master-slave architecture, as shown in this example, a single AP is used as the master to manage and provision the slave APs using the built-in controller. To avoid a single point of failure in the wireless network, the slave AP can be configured as a failover master. And once this is completed, the primary master will send the configuration of the network to the failover master and the failover master will start monitoring the status of the primary master to detect any failure. And when the failover master detects that the primary master is down, it will promote itself to an active master and replaces the primary master in its functions. The process of switching functions to the failover master takes between 20 and 30 minutes. And during that process, wireless connection is not impacted except for the clients that are directly connected to the primary uh, master AP. But eventually, these clients will automatically connect to the adjacent APs if there is enough signal. If the primary master AP comes back up, the configured fadeover master will go back to slave mode and the primary master AP will regain all its management and provisioning functions. Now that we explained how the failover process works, let's go ahead and log into the web interface of a master GWN to demonstrate how to configure the failover master feature. So I will use my credentials to log in to the web interface of a GWN access point. As you might know, the first GWN AP that you log into first will become the master and you simply use the built-in controller available through the web interface to discover, pair, and provision the other APs. So I'm just gonna go to under access points, then configuration. So as you can see, I'm logged into the master and I already have another access point that is paired with the master and it is in slave mode. To discover other APs in your network, you just click on discover and then you click on the pair icon. And once you do that, the system will add the access point to the built-in controller and it's gonna start the provisioning process. Once the provision process is complete and the devices are all showing online, then I can go to failover and then I can select one of the slave APs to become the failover of the master access point. So I'm gonna choose this access point, then save and apply. Applying the changes usually takes a few seconds. So now that the changes have been applied successfully, the master will provision the failover uh, access point with the configuration. And you will notice that the failover access point will go into offline mode during the provisioning process. So once the uh, access point becomes a failover, you're gonna see this icon right here in red to indicate that this is a failover access point. As I mentioned during the presentation, 
if the master goes down, the failover master will uh, promote itself to become the active master. In case the master goes down because of a network connection and you need to log into the failover master, the process is simple. You just get the IP address of the failover master. To log into the failover master, we're going to use different login credentials. So for the user admin, it's going to be failover, and the login password is going to be the, uh, the same login password that we use to log into the primary master. So let's go ahead and sign in. One thing to remember is that you need to allow the failover 20 to 30 minutes because that's how long it takes for the uh, failover master to promote itself to an active uh, master. And once you log into the failover access point, you're going to see this failover here as an indication that this is a failover access point. So let's go ahead to the access points configuration page. If we go under configuration, there is another option that is available here, which is switch to master. So as, as I explained during the presentation, when the primary master, which is in our case, this access point here comes back online, it will regain the functionality of a master access point. So in case you want to keep this access point, which is the GWN7600 as the primary master, or you want to switch it. So you don't want to use the GWN7615 as the primary master anymore. Then you can use this option, which is switch to master. GWN access point is going to prompt you to confirm that you would like to convert the failover master to a primary master. So let's go ahead and click on OK. So once you click on OK, it's going to prompt you to log in again. In this case, after you switch a failover master to a primary master, we need to use the same login credentials as we used with the previous primary master. So we're not going to use failover, but instead we're going to use the admin username and the admin password. Sign in. Let's not worry about this prompt. Let's go ahead and go to access point configuration. And then if you notice, for example, that this access point is no longer available or you're not going to use it anymore, you can just unpair it from here. So you can delete it and then you can move on to another access point and select that one to become the failover master. One thing to note here is that when you use the switch to master option, the AP will be set as a primary master and it will not be able to return to the slave mode or failover master automatically. So that's something that you're going to have to do uh, manually using the web interface of the master. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please leave us a comment below if you have a request for any future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all the, our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.